what makes a swimming pool efficient? So you could answer this really in two different ways. And one would be to say the one that uses the least amount of energy. And I, that would probably be like a tiny temporary pool you pick up from the local hardware store with a pump so small it's really not even adequate for the job and as a result it consumes hardly any power and there's no salt system there's no heater or anything like that so it consumes a tiny amount of power i guess that's the the best right well i mean it's let's look at it this way this is the way that i would look at it for a swimming pool for a given application what makes that swimming pool efficient versus that same version of the swimming pool but it's inefficient self because there's a whole spectrum of swimming pools out there from temporary above ground all the way to massive luxury in ground swimming pools and everywhere in between. So how do you make one efficient versus one that's made inefficiently? I think at its heart, this boils down to energy loss. However much energy a pool uses to operate inefficiently, if you could use a lot less filtration and heating energy, and more or less accomplish the same thing that you're doing now, well, I guess that represents a more efficient example. And there's a couple of really big standout ways that you could check for this with your pool. Energy efficiency in swimming pools boils down to where are you using energy and where are you losing energy? There will be a certain amount of power that's needed to be consumed in order for your filtration and heating system to operate but your inefficiency is your loss of that, your unneeded loss of that energy. And there's two main ways that that's happening in the average swimming pool. The first one, the foremost one, is evaporation of water through the swimming pool surface. This accounts for over 95% of the energy loss that happens inside the body of the swimming pool to the swimming pool water. So your heated water, your chemically treated water, 95% of your energy loss in that water happens through evaporation. That simply means if you can find a way to limit evaporation, whether mechanical like a cover or there's chemical systems out there, you spray them on the pool water and they cover the, the surface of the water, usually with some sort of, sort of alcohol product and it temporarily pro, uh, provides a barrier that uh, prevents evaporation from the surface, they can pay massive dividends to the amount of energy loss that you're preventing in your swimming pool. So aside from covering the swimming pool and preventing evaporation through the surface layer, there is one more big, big area where you could be losing efficiency with your swimming pool. Every swimming pool needs a pump. The pump is the heart of the filtration system. If your pump is the wrong one or sized incorrectly or otherwise consuming too much power, it's going to represent a huge area of efficiency loss. And you're like, how much loss are we talking here? I'll put it to you this way. In a bad situation with a poorly operating swimming pool pump that's operating on a wrong, inefficient schedule, that pump can account for 50% of the total power that the average home is using. That's crazy. That's a crazy amount of power, but that's how much power large swimming pool pumps consume. So if you've got one of those and you're using it in an inefficient manner, you could be actually costing yourself an appreciable amount of money, all in efficiency loss. A more efficient variable speed pump versus a inefficient single speed pump would save a lot of money in that kind of situation. So you've got evaporation through the pool surface. You've got pool pumps, which could potentially be really inefficient, but there are potentially really efficient other options out there. Is there anything else, some low-hanging fruit for efficiency? What marks an inefficient pool versus an efficient one? Well, I think chemical efficiency should be mentioned here. So what's chemical efficiency? Basically, what this boils down to is, do you know what you're doing with the management of the chemistry and balancing of the water in your swimming pool? And you probably can answer that question honestly for yourself. And if you really know what you're doing, you probably don't really have any problems with your water, then you probably don't have any problems. But if you don't really know what you're doing, and you're kind of usually chasing your tail and you add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you hope that the pool water stays clear, well, that might represent some inefficiency in your chemicals. You're adding more stuff than you need to be. You're making more chemical corrections than you probably need to be doing. 
And as a result, you have inefficiency in your system. So these are the ways in which I would mark a swimming pool as efficient versus inefficient when you're considering on an individual unique basis, because there's different pools, different sizes, different peripheral accessories that they could have installed that all consume energy. If we just looked at the total amount of power or energy that, that a system is using, all of the fancy pools are using all of the most energy. But you could still have an inefficient fancy pool and you could have an efficient fancy pool and these are the ways that you do it. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.